Witajcie wszyscy from this kitchen tabletop edition of the Combinator. Today we'll be looking at this interesting piece by IBM, specifically Ambra. And it is a 486. We'll talk a little bit why it's kind of a 486. It's a unique 486 to be sure. These particular models were made from 1992 to 1996. They were introduced in Europe in 92. They made their way stateside in Canada in 93, 94. The U.S. stopped having them in 94, we Canucks kept them until 96. Uh, in 94 they were replaced by the Amber Line, not the Amber Line, the Aptiva Line. Oh, this A naming convention. Uh, in any case, uh, it's a unique system, it's, it's pretty well built I would say. It's pretty rugged, the, the components inside are of decent quality. Uh, this particular one is from 93 I believe. Uh, so it comes with your standard IBM hard drive, uh, TEAC, TIAC, CD-ROM. Uh, this one's actually got an original driver's diskette for the Service Logic video card. Uh, the quirks of this machine was that if you look at the color, this isn't just like, I mean, this is normal. I've cleaned this keyboard up. Uh, it's, it's, it's the beige of the era, as you can tell by the CD-ROM as well. And these are just like almost paper white, and that's how they made them. So you stick a CD-ROM in there, you know, unless you paint it white or, or, or get one that was specifically made for that. Um, you know, that's how they look. These uh, The floppy diskette drive is a standard floppy diskette drive, just without a face. The face is up here. If you look in there, you can actually see the electronics. Sankyo TB06J. Nice. Uh, so, yes, Ambra, very short lifespan on these machines. Uh, they... I don't know why they failed. Uh, they seem to have been competing with themselves. Uh, IBM's PS Value Point and other machines of the era. Uh, I'm not sure if this was just an experiment for IBM to learn more about competition or anything like that. They got mixed reviews. They were said to be, uh, for the price, pretty good machines. And they were also accused of using substandard components. Uh, we'll have a look at the components inside. For now, let's turn it on and explore the software side of it. Uh, one notable thing that the computer is known for is the strange mouse. I don't have it. In fact, I have a keyboard from Compaq and a Microsoft mouse and a generic LCD monitor. So let's have a look at, let's not move from that, let's have a look at the actual system. So that's a nice logo there. It's a Phoenix BIOS. Now what's interesting about that is you can't actually get into the BIOS, not that I could figure out, uh, until you give it an error, if you, you break it somehow. So, I mean, I usually just pop a RAM, uh, yeah, a RAM chip out. It screws up the uh, RAM count and it warns me saying, hey, this isn't right. Uh, I mean, maybe there's a way. Shift F2, I don't know. Uh, I couldn't figure it out. It's not a really big deal. This one has DOS version 6 on it. Uh, it has a 360 meg hard drive and it's full of games and windows and all sorts of other stuff like that. No bad sectors on it. It's a pretty solid drive there. So let's have a look around at the system. And if I have, I have to check it. Yes, I do. This is an old version of Check It. It might, they'll probably identify it as a 386, if anything. Yeah, 1990. This came out a few years later. Uh, what is this? This is oh, it's, a, it's a 486. Okay. So no Mathco processor in this, and it is an SX kind of. Remember, you'll be seeing the quotation marks a lot here because it is technically a 486. But it is a 16-bit 486. We'll talk about more about that later when we pop it open and have a look inside. But for the time being, notice it is bringing it up as a 486 with no math processor, which is authentic. It's true. It doesn't have one. And your standard, I mean, video RAM size on this machine varies between 256 and 768, which I find more... Uh, realistic because I know that there's uh, 768 in there why it's not a meg I don't know that's kind of weird let's get windows booted I'm gonna find my uh, 
my utility floppies here. Yeah, so that does have built-in sound. The sound's coming out of the, the screen there. It's not obviously not an original LCD because it's an LCD. And this came with a rather Packard Bell-esque-ish shape type monitor. Uh, I'll throw a picture in. There, there it is. And, alright, I can't find my... Okay, an SSI. We'll have a look at that afterwards. Close these discs up. Alright, uh, let's have a tour of Windows. So we do have a permanent swap file in here which makes for a lot of system resources free. This system does have 12 megs of RAM and everything is set up properly in here. The video drivers are the right ones. Not these ones. Uh, this one did not come with this particular system. I don't know if they will work, but I had an extra, it's a, the disc works, there's drivers on it. Uh, I've just put this in here because it says Amber on it, but uh, I have the uh, a separate drivers loaded on there and they work just fine. So what else is on here? Also the Yamaha OPL. And it has its own sound card, which actually if you go to the control panel, it has its own icon. You can set up all sorts of things in here. 1995, 1997, so slightly newer than the rest of the system, but uh, definitely compatible. And we have, what do we have, Home Access? Yeah, we have some City 2000 on here, which it runs very well, actually. It's, it's playable. Oh, right, I changed the video driver, so we're just going to skip through this part. Well, oh, that's finishing up here. Just uh, worried about, I noticed the other... The intro was out of frame there, so that uh, that's your standard CD-ROM or floppy drive. It's uh, built into the front face, but behind it is a standard cd uh, floppy drive. And the four-speed TEAC, really slow to open ones. And it doesn't like being pushed closed. Okay, anyways, this all works. Clearly I had to install this somehow on there. <laughs> Here's the original disc, just so nobody says, oh, you downloaded a copy, right? But no, that's, that's the original disc. So playability is decent. I don't know, this was like this one. And the hard drive is actually quite good. I don't think it's maybe the original one, because it's a 350 meg hard drive. And 92, that's possible, but it would have been expensive. Like, these things, you use probably something closely matching 120, maybe like a 170 or something like that. So, yeah, I mean, you can see the scrolling is, is pretty good. The refresh is, you know, it's, it's playable. And that's just the limitations of the graphics at the time, but it's 256 colors, 800 by 600. sound effects work. Alright, uh, what else is on here? There's, uh, under Max's, there's just that. So, oh, Civ, the original Civ. This should fly on this kind of machine. one sure whatever it's been a while since I've played this and I've played it on another machine so this is oh yeah okay there's my ship what has he got in there I don't even know where I was going I've got two catapults on there so I'm probably starting a war with somebody all right let's attack this yeah in your face we have another ship here. It's empty though. Anyways, it works well. Uh, sometimes I noticed on these older systems, it uses, uh, I don't know why, maybe it uses different memory addressing for the video card and it just screws the colors up. It looks like inverted and neon. So it's nice to see that that's not the case here. So, 
I mean, that's entertainment packs. I got, I'm not going to go through all of that, but you got Ski Free on here, Rattler Race. Get the, the NSSI real quick here. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy it over to the C drive. I think I have enough room. Do I have it on here? I have it already on here. Okay, no need for that to scat. I was searching for nothing. This runs a lot faster off of the, off of the hard drive. Yeah, it doesn't think that these computers will uh, still be working in 2020, but that is the correct date. I did change the CMOS battery. It is up to date. So there it is, the accurate diagnostics. 486 SLC2 at 50 megahertz. The bus speed is 50 megahertz. Uh, this is weird. SVGA 768K. I've had a couple other reports, uh, despite it having you know eight 44256K chips. I don't know. Maybe some of it's used for some kind of parody, I don't know. It's all built into the motherboard. Uh, so we have a 348 meg hard drive and a 49, that's probably the, that is interesting. Let's have a closer look at that. Is there like another partition on here? No, it's just that, that that's weird. So it tells you exactly what kind of hard drive it is inside of here. SSA 33. You, you'll see that's the actual label on the hard drive once we open up the machine. And yeah, just a just a bit left, 13 megs. So let's go to benchmarks real quick. This is where it gets interesting because it is on par, if not slightly better, than a DX40. Uh, this one is running at 50 megahertz, so you would think it would be closer to here, but it is a 16-bit chip. That may impact performance in some way. Let's set this up. So this game came out uh, the same year as this machine, so should have no problem running it. Gonna get the screen size a bit bigger there. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay, OSD. I have a feeling if I touch that. Anyways, the frame rate seems pretty good. Sound is not delayed. I have fairly good input. There's no lag. Oh, I'm getting shot at. I think I touched that door. I think that's what it is. I'm going to go through here. There we go. Wow. to the guy with the shotgun, and then blow him up. It only works if he doesn't hit me back. Got some armor, gotta get some health, and then lose it because I'm standing around this thing too long. Anyways, uh, in conclusion, I think this one works well. The graphics are pretty, well, I wouldn't say crisp, I mean they're as good as they were back in the day. This, I really like this LCD actually. It, it just kind of brings it to life. I, I don't know how to explain it better than that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is pop out one of these RAM chips, throw it back on, and now it's going to tell me that my RAM count is all not how it should be, and then we can get into the BIOS. This this startup really reminds me of Packard Bell, especially here, the RAM count. 
I don't know if it uses the same BIOS or anything like that, but yeah, this is the only way I could found to get into it. So F1 key to continue, F2 to enter the setup utility. Uh, you know, your pretty standard AMBRA setup page. And I think, does this have a date on it? Yes, it does. Okay, so I don't know if you can make that out on this camera. Uh, May 3rd, 1992. Okay, so it's one of the first ones. That's, uh, yeah, wow, it's the initial run, I guess. So this BIOS kind of sucks. Uh, I'll tell you why. Because I, to get anything larger than what can fit on a diskette and won't go on a CD-ROM, uh, like I try to use, oops, uh, where is it? Right here. Pardon me. One of these. All right, everyone's familiar with this CF drive. Connect it to an IDE, slave it, and put it in. Uh, a lot of computers will do that. Uh, in this case, no, you can't because you have a list of your standard hard drive types, all right, and then some weird ones. Like, check this out. Uh, what? Uh, I'm sure if I Google that, I'll get an answer. But I just I've never seen these as hard disk types. Uh, I know what that is. Uh, that is a Maxter. And then type five, six. So this wouldn't even take my uh, my type one. Uh, MFM 10 meg, which wouldn't even fit in here, like it's, it is taller than the whole computer. But that's weird that it wouldn't take that, unless any, some of these maybe are coded to that. I'm not sure. Anyways, my gripe with this is okay, Type 48 is one where you can put your own information and just scroll over and put it in. So, okay, so what if I have two Type 48 drives? Alright, let's, uh, let's, go, let's go down, put in another Type 48 drive. Sweet, now let's start editing them, right? Boom, it edits them both. Like, I mean, I guess at the time. Where I mean, really, where would you put another hard drive? That's uh, that's the, the main question. Uh, we'll tear it down in a second. I guess if you sacrifice your CD-ROM, you, you could put another hard drive in. Minor gripe, but for me, it's like, God, now I have to take that out. Take this, put it in another machine. It's just peeking out over there. That's the how I got all the data on here. Uh, but other than that, you know, you got your standard. You can enable your cache, uh, your shadowing your internal oh my second comp port's disabled let's uh, let's, let's re-enable that uh you can set your your addresses for your parallel port i'm gonna leave it at the stock one here AT. Uh, and yeah i mean it supports high density low density diskette drive b i guess that would have to be replaced by it and CPU speed fast and slow. There is a control shift to one way to do this as well. I'm not interested in that. You can put a password on it, which is good. And you can set your time. Is that time accurate now? What time is it now? I think it's a bit later. Let me get that right. Since I'm here and it's hard to get into. It's 10.08. Okay. So, on to... And the date is... Is that the 29th today? Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, you can change that in DOS. That's not a problem. So anyways, that's uh, that's that's the tour of the BIOS. So now let's rip this apart. No, wait. Actually, just before we rip it apart, I, I, j j I was looking for the save button here, and I never noticed that sysinfo. So that's uh, that's annoying. That is annoying. That's why when you put the two megs in, it'll only show like 1.2 or 1.4 megs, and the rest is, is going to be hidden. It's, it's 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 sloppy. So cool. I mean, that's it. It doesn't really give you a serial number or anything like that. Just that's it. Hit a key. Cool. All right. Now now let's let's take it apart. <laughs> 